All right, I'm back over here. Fox hauler messing with the 74. I took my carburetor off. I didn't film any of this because y'all have seen me build carburetors a thousand times. But this, my blow through carburetor, uh, it was kind of, a, it was rich part throttle. The wide open throttle was great. It was just the part throttle was a little too rich. So I did some stuff inside of it that I've done on other carburetors, but I just never needed to do it to mine. But I modified a few things inside and I squared the jets up, but not squared it up like 70 front, 70 secondary. I squared it up orifice size. I figure you calculate the area of each one of the holes, like the power valve uh, circuit restrictors. Like I open these up and then I put a 67 jet in it. How can I put this? You figure up the area of the orifice, how much that can flow. And what you want to do is try to get the primary and the secondary squared. What you want to try to square a carburetor anyway for a good fuel distribution. That's just, that's something you just generally want to do. But it's especially important with a blow through deal. But what I did is I got a, a 55 thousandths power valve restrictor circuit, power valve circuit restrictor, however you want to say, I've always said power valve restrictor circuit, whatever. But I've got a 55 in that and I've got a 67 jet. And the 67 jet, where's my book? I'll just, I'll just show you. I'll just show you what I'm talking about. It's real simple. It's, it's simple but complicated. Like this is all my motors, all my stuff. Here's the motor I'm doing for Jesse. Right. Okay, ain't quite there yet. All right, here we go. This is carb stuff. I'll show you. This is how you calculate what jets you need and what power valve restrictor you need and all that and how it correlates to your secondary side. Like right here, here's the whole diameter. You take the whole diameter and the whole diameter, you take that and you do pi times the whole diameter squared. And that'll give you the area. And you take the area and you add, let's see, a 55,000 power valve restrictor circuit uh, is 100 and 0 0.0145 and then the jet is 0 0.0095 or, or you know the jet is 0 0.0145 and the power valve restrictor is 0 0.0095 that's the area so that primary part of the carburetor will flow 0 0.0240 of area so what you want to do is try to get the secondary as close to that as possible like this with an 80 jet it's 0 0.0248 so it's almost I mean this is only eight higher and that's like I mean that's way way down there so it's basically exactly the same so that way when you're cruising part throttle and everything else it's lean and then as you open up and the power valve opens and everything else all that extra fuel comes in and you're still flowing getting the same amount of fuel in the primary side as you are the secondary side at wide open throttle but you're not at part throttle and you're not at cruise it's it's a lot leaner and to also built a boost activated not boost reference a boost activated power valve that I'm going to stick in it uh, to help with my fuel curve this the way that I built this one there's all kinds of videos and stuff on YouTube of stuff like how to do the well not how to do these but it's pretty simple you just flip it you take the power valve you take it apart and you flip it around and you put the the needle in backwards and you drill this down to where it seats and then you put the spring back on the outside this is a 4.5 power valve, which means it takes about 2 PSI to open this. So, that this will stay closed all the time until the bowl pressure, because bowl pressure is what's going to push this open, gets to 2 PSI, then that'll pop open and enrich the circuit, and then all that fuel will be there, but it'll only be there in boost. So I'm going to try my 4.5 power valve that I got in it now, see how that runs, and then I'm going to do this. And the way I got it set up is it can open over 100, I think 120 thousandths, that's what I measure for the inside. There was a, there was a write-up on one of them forums on how to do these, but I did mine different because I didn't think that was giving enough fuel volume. I didn't think that just relying on the brass and the, the cup wall on the bottom where the, the drill bit cuts in as a seat was good enough, and I wanted to go further in so I'd have more fuel increase. So I took uh, fuel O-rings, and I slipped them. I don't know if you can see it, but I slipped it over that little valve in there, and it seals. I mean, it seals perfectly. We'll see how it works. Colton, I was building this and Colton went and ordered him one for the S10. Uh, his was 75 bucks. This cost me like an hour. So 
it's all in it's all in what you do i would prefer to, to learn to build one and to know how it's going to work and everything else and then you can order one later on but i, I just want to see if i could do one of these and that's exactly what i did so and i don't have a wide band which a wide band everybody says go wide band wide band but the most accurate way which it's really hard to do is to wide open throttle clean cut look at the plugs because that will tell you what's going on in every single cylinder a wide band is going to tell you what's going on collectively on each bank or if you got them all run into one it's going to tell you collectively what's going on and tune it like that i mean i would still you could do that a lot of that's what everybody does that's how they tune but when with doing that i would aim for a little bit richer because one cylinder on a small block or a big block whatever else is going to be leaner number five is generally always leaner number five or number seven is generally always leaner because the way that the way everything flows five and seven fire right after each other in the firing order one eight four three six five seven so there's they're using that charge like that one fires and then that one fires so they're they're using that charge up when all the other ones get a pretty even distribution and they fire separate those two being right close together that's generally where you're going to have either number five or number seven will generally be the leanest cylinders in the small block generally in a chevrolet we'll say that five and seven if it's got eight cylinders five and seven is generally going to be uh the leanest ones so you have to tune for those cylinders everything else might be might seem okay but if those are lean and you get detonation you pop a piston or something like that then it's, it's just bad so that's why i go off of plug readings instead of a wide band and not to mention a wide band like 400 dollars. and i mean i would like to put one on here just to have something to reference off of but I've just always read plugs and that's just what I do. A plug, a plug will tell you exactly what's going on in the cell there. Whether it be too much time and not enough time and too much fuel, too little fuel, all that kind of stuff. So I've just learned to trust what the plug tells me and just go with that. But there's a quick little rundown of what I'm talking about. So I did all that to this carburetor. 750 Pro Form, which is exactly like a quick fuel, which is look like all in pants pants carburetors, they're just cheaper. Um, modified everything in it uh, vent tube extensions and all that it's the this thing works fantastic I've built a lot of these and they work really well with I don't want to say simple modifications but if you do them right and you understand how carburetors work they you can set them up and they work really well for blow fans. so good 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 and uh, Robert Pete's car he went down there and made a pass he said it was flying and went a 750 something or another uh, had a little hesitation out of the hole because he put that extra spacer on the plenum and when you add plenum volume to the carburetor, the, uh, the jets on that one was 6.5 power valve, 70 primary, 80 secondary. It needs a little bit more pump shot. I, with tunnel rams especially, when you've got two inline carburetors like a TR1X, the big plenum, you really got to give that pump shot because it, it needs so much to overcome till that charge hits and gets past that plenum volume. So I always go with a 50cc accelerator pump. I might do that on Robert Peaks just to give him the duration and the amount of volume pump shot to... Uh, Get in there but we might go over there this week and i might take it up and down the road and put a load on it and tune it it may need a different power valve in it it may just need a little bit more jetting i don't know but free revving one i mean you can free rev them and that's pretty good but until you put a load on it and try to launch one that's when you're you'll find your carburetor issues so good 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 but yeah right now i'm putting the hood pins in because the front end above like 78 mile an hour 78 mile an hour the front end tries to lift off so I'm putting the hood pins in and I put my grill piece, my trim piece on the front, my fiberglass hood. I'm gonna paint that, I'm gonna paint that like American flag. It's gonna be cool. Uh, but just, just over here pedaling. Truck wars got canceled, so we didn't get to go to that. So I'm fixing to take my car. We're gonna go race this thing. Go shake it down, do some testing to do something. Cause I'm just, I'm chomping at the bit now. We're gonna take this and then we're gonna take that 57 and I'm gonna get back working on the 64. It'll be something different. Also, got to relocate my wastegate. I'm probably going to put it right there so that I can upgrade to a different turbo. Uh, because this one works. It just takes too long to spool. You got a 90 turbine and a 69 compressor. And this just takes too much to get it spooled up. This sucker don't come in full boost to like 3,800 RPM. Which, I mean, it's not bad, but it could be a lot better. It's just not efficient enough. So, yep, I'm going to get rid of the wastegate being here. I'm going to put it right there. That way I can just swap turbos, whatever I want to do. And I don't have to worry. It'll be fine. That's what I'm doing, just pitting around. But there's me, there's a little rant on carburetor jetting and, and all that kind of stuff. Also, 
Oh, I know I keep saying also, also, also. But on that carburetor there, I plugged off one of the emulsion tubes where one of the emulsion, emulsion bleeds. I plugged it off with a uh, little block plug and that is going to give more fuel from the main well a lot more volume well not so much volume it's not going to aerate it as much it's not going to do so much air in it so it'll be able to suck more fuel up top and then be lean down low so we'll see how it does it may fall on its face i don't know right now it's only at five pounds of boost i usually run around at 10 but because i changed turbo turbine housings i the wastegate's a lot bigger this is a 50 millimeter where before i had a 37 millimeter a 38 millimeter so it's it's relieving really, really well. That's why I also want to relocate it. But the springs and stuff I put in there, it only went to five pounds of boost and I'm pulling way too much timing. I'm pulling like nine or 10 degrees of timing because that's the boost level that I was running. And mine isn't progressive. It just, it's RPM activated and at 4,000 it pulls nine degrees. And because I don't have a gradual activation switch that's boost, boost activated. So I just kind of got to make do with what I got. And I built that whole system and, and it works. It pulls timing, but it's just not it doesn't pull gradual timing like as it as the boost comes in it just hits 4000 and because i'm not at full boost at 4000 it pulls nine and then the full boost gets there and then it's awesome but at five pounds of boost i could really tell that the carburetor was super super rich and that it was pulling too much timing for that low of, of uh, boost pressure because the cylinder pressure was not because the cam and everything else is waiting on that cylinder pressure waiting on that boost to get there and it just don't get there so that's why you got to run you got to build your motor for what boost level you want to run and you can always go up from there but it dropping down it's just not happening so it was too much carb not enough timing and not enough boost so so i'm fixing right now all right i got the hood pins in these are actually hood pins that come out of the back of dad's black uh 76 truck they got a good mojo on them they're on there now this thing won't fly up well, when you hit top speed, it won't try to blow up on me. Anybody else out there in the world listen to a 105 5 The Outlaw country station? And they don't play outlaw music on the station, they just play regular country music. See, listen, look what it'll do. It'll be like 155 The Outlaw, and then it'll play something awful. See what I mean? <laughs> yeah, outlaw. Let me tell you. I was messing with the carburetor, tuning and tuning, and that uh, boost activated power valve that I built actually seemed to work. Like, it was nice, and the mixture seemed fine. I'm going to pull the plug and look and see, but it seemed like it was all right. I mean, five pounds of boost is, is nothing to that motor. It, it can take up to... Because of the fuel pump, it can handle about 16, 17. That's when it'll start to nose over because the fuel pump just can't supply enough volume and pressure to keep up with boost over that. But that thing at nine pounds is pretty wicked. And I'm gonna turn it up to 12. I got my spring stuff to put it at 12 and that'll be the Street Tune 12. Basically stock bottom end 350 with forged pistons in it. It's basically what it is. And a, and a can that I specially selected for that deal. Uh, it's actually a pretty, pretty trick setup i've got with the cam i don't know if anybody seen in the other videos where i put it in and how i set everything up but said it depending on how the plugs look if the plugs look fine i'm gonna leave it alone and just adjust because at between 30 about 3100 and 4000 there's this little wow you can hear it's just the slightest spot and it's just oh you can hear that gurgle and then it cleans itself up, which means that the fuel needs to be there sooner. So we'll, we'll just see. Uh, and I might build me a homemade water meth injection system to fog into the front of the turbo. I mean, I don't really need it, but it's all, it's better to have and not need it. It's like Colton the other day when we went to the track, he got a bad batch of gas. And if it wasn't for the water meth spraying into it, it would have hurt that motor bad. They put 87 in the 93 pump because of the gas crisis. And that was not good. All right, I'm building my water meth injection deal. This is a snow performance nozzle uh, number five, which I think is to 600, 800, 800 horse, I think. Uh, the bigger one is what's in the S10. But what I did is I took a regular uh, 3 8 nut, drilled it out and tapped it with the MPT thread. So that thread's on there and I'm gonna take a 
piece of plate, something small actually, a big washer, come out with ends, probably four different ways to keep this thing nice and stable. It's gonna mount right there, pre-turbo, and whenever it gets to a given PSI, it'll flip this on. The pump will be mounted there or over there, or might mount it up here. I don't know, I gotta figure out where to mount the pump deal. Uh, but the pump, I'll show you it, it's in the back. That's not the snow performance one. This is one out of a uh, truck. You'll see. I, I tested the pressure on that, man. It has killer pressure. So that's what I'm going to use. But um, yeah, I'm going to fog it in before the turbo because that cools the turbo. That cools the inlet charge. It cools everything. And this is a cheap GT45 turbo. And I mean, people are like, oh, you can't run that into the turbo. That's going to damage the propeller. No, it won't. If it's, if it's atomized and vaporized well enough, small enough, and you put it in the right position, It'll be fine. So, that's what I'm gonna do, and that'll cool turbo, cool everything. It'll make the turbo behave like a smaller turbo. It, it just makes everything awesome. And not to mention, blowing through a carburetor drops your inlet temps over 100 degrees anyway. So that will just super cool everything, make for even better fuel charge, and make for even more power without even turning the boost up. But this is a good fail safe in case you get a bad batch of gas or you know the timing doesn't pull out or something like that it doesn't pull timing like it's supposed to anything that happens this will band-aid and and keep it from hurting anything so not really needed but it's if you can make one make one all right there it is right dead in the center Alright, there's the reservoir, there's the line that goes up, there's the nozzle, which mounts in the front there, wired up to a hob switch, activates at 6 PSI, almost 6, got a water mess system reservoir there's all that just had to relocate it to the other side now everything is in there boy there's a lot of stuff on this car okay so the other day i was taking my car from down the road uh and i gotta set it only six pounds of boost because i'm figuring out the sooner the carburetor was good, it was okay, but every time it would go from leaving to wide open throttle, it had this little like, ugh, and it turned out what that was was a overly rich because the power valve was opening too soon, enriching the system way too much, and then the boost got there and cleaned it out. But at six pounds of boost, the boost don't get there and it don't clean it out. So what I've done is, I'll show you when I go inside, I've built a boost activated power valve that has a port in the main body of my carburetor that goes to that and I blocked off the lower side it goes to that and it activates the power valve with boost it starts at 3 psi and then it's all the way open by 6 uh, so that will allow me and also open up my power valve restrictor circuits a little more power valve circuit restrictors a little more um, I actually got these little blocks and I made my own little, like little jet for the power valve circuit uh, what that allows me to do now is lean it out to where it cruises like you can put a power valve block off in one of these deals and cruise it and that'll tell you about where the cruise jet needs to be and then take that out and put your regular power valve or a uh, boost activated power valve in it and then you can you'll see about what the cruise jet needs to be then you can go from there and do the, the actual jetting for wide open throttle so what I'm gonna do is pop this off and I will show you exactly what I've done oh yeah and two the other day uh, like i've got it fixed now i had to rewire everything because we was going to dustin's wedding sorry mr wedding but uh see all the big see all the nice new wiring and stuff that whole thing burnt i mean you can see the go in the gopro i'll post that clip up of where it caught on fire and
burn it all everything it's exactly what happens every time I plan to go do something it was full-on chaos so yeah sorry we missed your wedding Dustin I, I was trying buddy this thing's been flawless and then just all of a sudden just because we're gonna take this I was gonna take this and Cole's gonna take the s10 and all this other stuff and we're gonna meet up out there and and then uh, change the clothes and go out there to Dustin's deal but like I said, just in the GoPro, I'm, it goes up good. So, <laughs> absolutely sucks. But what happened was my uh, battery cable wire, where it ran across right there at the frame, where it was sitting on that, it was bouncing and bouncing and eventually eat through. And it shorted out when it done, when it did, man. Everything that went to the fuse, all that just went, whoosh, smoked it. But like I said, it's all fixed now and back. Doing good enough. Uh, but I'm dialing my carburetor in a little bit better. It was it was okay, but I want it to be absolutely perfect. Just to make it way more efficient. Like, you don't have to have a boost activator power valve. You don't have to do any of that stuff. Like, this worked pretty good. Like, Colton's, Colton's S10 don't got one. It's got a standard power valve in it. And it does good. But I want, for street driving and stuff like that, it, uh, the boost activator power valve is it's pretty cool. Pop it apart and show you what I'm doing. I normally wouldn't show people stuff like this because these are the kind of tricks and stuff I do. For other folks uh, to make their stuff work awesome but I mean who cares it boost activator power valves is nothing new they've been around for a really long time the one that I've done is kind of similar to the CNS version that was out a long time ago they have them now to where they're actually they're referenced off of the the pressure in the bowl but I tried to make one like that and I did it just I don't like it all right see this right here this port I drilled through that to a port that comes out right there. So vacuum line goes to that, that goes to this, that pressurizes and pushes this plunger open, pushes back this way, watch. See that? And that's how that works. Pressurizes, pushes that open and allows the fuel in once this is pressurized. So, I've tested it, all that stuff works at 3 PSI and it's all the way open by 6. See how that goes and the spring goes right there, run up against that and that holds tension on it. Alright, power valve, circuit restrictor, 0 0.075, uh, 70 jet, 85 secondary jet, see where I do the math for the 85 secondary jet, 0 0.02392 and the primary oil is 0 0.0269. So it's primary is still a little fatter than the secondary, but it's pretty close. And I don't have all the jets in the, in the jet box to actually make it perfect. But, uh, 56 accelerator pump, uh, a few other little odds and ends and tricks and stuff, but nothing too crazy. But this has got the boost activator power valve with this port right here that air goes in. Well, boost pressure goes in, pressurizes, and opens the power valve. Starts open at 3, fully open by 6. I know I've said that already. Uh, yeah, other than that. Pretty much same carburetor, 750 main body. That's the one that I made into like this, and this one just kind of flows a little bit better. All right, we go stop it on there. All right, uh, so I bolted that carburetor that modified. This is, I had one bowl pressure activated boost activator power valve. I took that out and I built one that uses, it's inside where the uh, cavity for vacuum, for the power valve to sense vacuum. From underneath the carburetor it's in that cavity with a tube you've seen earlier in the video it's a tube that runs into the main body of the carburetor with a pressure port to it so that it will see boost pressure and then push against the spring that opens the power valve kind of like backwards uh so i've got all that in the carburetor now so i'm gonna see if that gets rid of that little bit of hiccup and like i know most people wouldn't worry about a little just a slice hiccup in one but i do i don't like it and I just want it to be right. And if usually if you tune one and get it right at six pounds of boost, you can go to 10 or 12 pounds of boost without really having to mess with anything. Uh, so that's what I'm doing. The boost is low, only six pounds. And uh, I'm gonna take it up a road and roll into it, flat foot it, and 
see how it does but I mean with the other one the other uh, boost activator power valve it, I couldn't get it to come in soon enough like I would have to take it back apart and put different springs on but this I can just shim the spring or put a different spring on it but it's real simple I don't have to take anything apart I can just pull the bowl off and put a different spring in it it's no big deal I got all my floats set everything set mixture screws are set fuel pump on turn my fuel pressure up to seven instead of six Pump shot, nothing like that. Okay, so the boost activator power valve uh, being activated from the main body with a uh, boost port. That is actually pretty awesome. Like it worked, it worked way better than anything. And that's only like five or six pounds of boost. And it was, I mean, it was pulling pretty good. Uh, so I'm going to fix that wastegate deal, relocate the wastegate and put some springs in and get it on up to about 12 or 13. And I think I can step my primary jet down from the 70 to the what my math originally called for would be about a 68. So I think I can go from that down to a 68. And I think it'll be good. But like right there, you can just, just roll into it and it's just rah, I mean, it's, it's pretty good. So boost activator power valve, homemade boost activator power valve for the W. For the win. All right, I changed turbine housings. Run with a different one. Block that off. Put my waste gate right there, uh, 50 millimeter. Um, hook everything back up. Only six pounds of boost. Really? Yeah. Man. Feel like you need much more than that? <laughs> right yeah. Now? You need 12. <laughs> Not right this moment, but that's what I've been trying to hit is the target tune at six pounds. Right. Yeah, it's good. Super clean right there. 
I'll take that. <laughs>